heading out with your bullfrog on a Sunday afternoon. Today, I give the people what they want. Elegant city and a country drive. And now the original National Pike. And coming to the first of our hotspots. I think you know where we are. And now here we be in beautiful downtown Ellicott City. The second place here is our bubble man doing his thing. Oh, there he is. Oh, really? oh, let's see. Oh, I see. So doing the mortar thing, okay. I'll hmm. get your rear. She talks. I know, I'm weird. How much longer do you think before you're open? How much longer do you think before you're open again? What do you think? Oh, we don't know yet. You don't know yet? Okay. Oh. You have a lot of fans out there waiting for you. A lot of fans. All right, yeah, yeah, Take yeah, it yeah. easy. All right, take care. All right. Good luck when you work. All right, yeah. Okay. Westward Ho. Elegant City is a busy place on this 88 degree Sunday afternoon. What a shame most of the buildings from Kaplan's on down will be destroyed. A lot of what you see across the street is about to go. But still, most places bounced back rather nicely. And again, there's this. Ooh. Our nice doggy friend is still there. Yeah, look at that. Her, her shoes and... Anyone need a dress while we're here? Nice, like, uh... No, how summery. Mm -hmm. I just love those sidewalk sales. But I already have a sidewalk. Okay, no more sightseeing. But then again, that's kind of why we're here. But why am I really here? For this. Let's go do some wheeling and dealing. Right you can go in. This one? You can go in. Oh. Try to get to go in the door, but she won't go in. Yeah, open a door with a knob, it works. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey buddy, what's up? How's it going? How you doing? I brought you something. Oh really? Yeah. I looked at last time. There we go, that's the deep purple machine head there in SQ Quad. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. If you can give me 30 bucks for it, let's have it right now. Yeah, is, is that what I said? I don't remember what I said. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. It's yours. Also, <laughs> there you go. Hold up Deep Purple for the people to see. Just made another sale there, Deep Purple, Machine Head. Classic album right there, Smoke on the Water. Quadrophonic. SQ. I have a CD4 copy of that too that I showed you. Remember? I've got vinyl and some CDs. <laughs> Never hear some cassettes. But no 8-tracks yet. Let's see some 8-tracks. That's where I just came from. North Adam. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, blue vinyl on the turntable. Blue vinyl? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, the blue vinyl there, right? Oh, is it playing? Right. Yeah, it's playing right now. <laughs> All right. No, I 
I really appreciate it. Welcome back. It's just to find more stuff, I'll let you know, okay? I know what you want by now. Yeah. I know what you're looking for. <laughs> Those classic stuff here just can't get away from here. Tangerine. Three tangerine dream. They're great. Tangerine dream. I like, I like this record I like in them. particular. Well, they're like synergy. Just yeah. like them. Yeah, very much so. Wait. Time for a look around. Yes. And once again, Westward Ho. And once again, I guess I can sell my teeth. And again, across the way, Taylor's. Interesting new signage here. But now it's time to jump to the south side of the street. Across the way is Old US 29. Over there somewhere. Again by Taylor's. Hey. Go ahead, go away. For the first, first few seconds, go ahead. Cool off for a bit. Hey, why not? Whoa. A lot of action today. I guess something's happening. If the food's on, don't touch. I don't want to see people eating on my video. Trying to keep it tasteful, that's all. I'm thinking about eating on more than you can chew. And more of the old stuff I love so much. Turntables and old radios. Old multi-band radios. You even got shortwave. Well, three shortwave bands. Back in the day, I could have used that. Yes, indeed. Brunch here at Taylor's. Still, I love places like this. Bring back a lot of memories for me. Yeah, him. Dolly has a lamp like that. And she's wondering what it would sell for, what it's worth. What will it sell for if she brings it here? Another old time lamp here. We were told the best thing to do is to put them online and see what happens. A day like today, that's what you need. Okay, here I come. Apparently somebody wants to see your bullfrog. <laughs> what? One more conversation. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll cover some more ground. Yeah, might as well cover more ground. Try pushing, normally works. There we go. I knew that would work. I got it. I'm back into the heat. Almost 88 degrees out here. But to think in about a year from now, this place will have a totally different look. At least from Kaplan's on down. I have a cat waving and Sylvester saying, hire me. Where's Sweetie Bird? But over here, we have Snoopy and Woodstock. Calling for a bird, Woodstock. But the plans are now finalized. Unfortunately, most buildings from here on down are set for demolition because it's at this point that Tiber Creek begins to flood beneath the buildings. Right here at this curve in the road. The problem is, the foundations to these buildings 
have been compromised by Tiber Creek and they have weak foundations as a result. So that's why they gotta go, unfortunately. As you can see, some of these places never reopened. A real shame. And most are now gonna go. And again, Tiber Creek, the cause of it all. Weakening those foundations. They were behind in a back alley, I guess you could say. I guess you can call this an alley. The stores over here will stay, but those over here are gonna go. What a shame. She likes to play with her cane for some reason. I taught her not to do that, but she still does it. I never do that. Yes, these will stay, but these will go. The Phoenix Emporium has great stuff, but same they gotta go. When I get over there, the man. But he's still not sure when we're going to get those bubbles. And again, CSX, the country's oldest train station, maybe the world's oldest. All right, hit the road to the Frogmobile. Not departing the city, or trying to. But apparently flood control is still going on. Nope, ain't done yet. Yes indeed. Two creeks in the area joined forces to flood the place. Tiber Creek to the south and Hudson Creek to the north. Oh well. I guess that makes it a conspiracy, doesn't it? Two or more. And now the modern day US 40, which eventually hits onto I 70. And here it is doing just that. Now both routes are one and the same. At least until Frederick, anyway. Now for the ride, I promised everybody. I keep my promises. But right about now, I'd rather be on this road than Interstate 95. A little more sanity here. Not much more, but a little more. I'm once again surmounting Pars Ridge. The high point between Baltimore and Frederick. Now down the other side, we should soon be seeing some mountains. Got some distant misty mountains out there. I guess it's a humid day. That's why they appear like that. Almost 90 out there, and I guess also rather humid. And again, the Misty Mountain. And once again, in the Frederick area. And here we depart I 70 in favor of US 340. for a road there. Technology Parkway. 
Should I live there? I am technology, sort of. And now we are ascending to Tocton Mountain. This road takes a lower summit over the mountain than do US 40 or I 70. In the distance, South Mountain. Also looking misty. And there it is again. But this road doesn't cross it, but instead the road bends around it. Oops, and there it goes. And now bending around South Mountain. In an area known as Weaverton. Named after Casper Weaver, a one time being a railroad engineer. And we have a CSX down there. Let's try and have a look. And that stops here in downtown Weaverton. Original two lane US 340 ran right that direction. The modern day 340 we were just on is at the top of that fill there. West to the left, east to the right. And panning back to the east, old 340 ends right there, being blocked by the fill for the new 340. But we'll go there and cross the CSX tracks, have a look at some CNO canal spots. And now facing east on CSX. You can also see the modern day USB 40 that brought us down here. We came in this direction. At one time a track bore off from here to Hagerstown, Maryland to the north. Some of the rails are still left. There. Part of the former Hagerstown branch of the B&O. I believe pulled up in the early 70s. Back in the 1800s, these tracks are further apart. And Weaverton Station sat between the tracks. But of course, station long gone, and tracks realigned. And here in the woods, what's left of the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. The towpath there. Did my documentary on this back in 1997. Part of the canal bit through those leaves. And from here, to Harpers Ferry to the west, the Appalachian Trail shares the towpath with the canal. And there is Lock House 31 for the CNO Canal, along with Lock 31. First time in high def by your bullfrog. And east down the towpath. The next hot spot will be Brunswick, Maryland, if we kept going that direction. To the west will be Harper's Ferry and Sandy Hook. And what you see here is a waste weir. What they do is relieve the canal of excess water. What I can figure out is how come there's a waste weir here, whereas at one time right here, there was something called an informal overflow, which did the same thing as the waste weir, relieved the canal of excess water. There was a dip in the towpath where the water actually overflowed the towpath and when it went down to the river. So why there's a waste weir and an informal overflow within a few feet of each other is confusing to me. Now of course you can't tell any water ever flowed over this part of the towpath, 
but at one time it did. You can tell the inform overflows because the, the path dips and rises again where they were. Read the signs. Before departing, one more look at Luck House 31. Hard to believe folks actually lived there and attended Lock 24 hours a day. That was a cool job. Paid a couple of bucks a week. I guess back then nobody really got rich. Now getting on to the original US 340. The one time Hagerstown branch would have crossed right here and gone that way to Hagerstown. Now grown over. But at one time, the flashing lights were still over the road. In front of us there is Maryland Heights. And up here, original 340, once poor left to continue on. At least until 1948 when they built the new bridge over the Potomac. Up until 48, we 40 bore this way, where they were about to go right now. Modern day bridge for 340 right down there. Built in 1948, which will soon pass beneath. And there it is. Modern day US 340. And up ahead. Sandy Hook. Named after a quicksand deposit in the Potomac River. But to this day, no one's found any quicksand. So how it got that name, can't say. So, any Sandy Hookers out today? Well, no Sandy Hookers. Whatever you call someone from here. What's funny about this town it's a linear town. All the houses are on one side of the road. So you can't ask anybody, what side of the road do you live on? There's only one side. Other side, CSX. How about that? There was also a turntable back there, supposedly, for the railroad. But to me, there's no room to fit a turntable back there. So where'd they put it? Now crossing over CSX. Should be a tunnel down there someplace. The Harper's Ferry Tunnel. Somewhere. I tried. Now about to pass beneath CSX. At one time I started crossing over a bridge to West Virginia that direction. Bridge long gone. See what's happening here. And there, the, the former Salty Dog Tavern. Let's see. What's known for the, the potency of its liquor and the easiness of its women? That's how the story goes. And again, the Sino Canal. Had many a bike ride along there. And now we're rising out of the river valley. And now we're on a road called Back Road. I say, obviously, as back as it gets. And arriving someplace known as Dargan Bend. There you have it. Mapo 64.9 on the CNO Canal, which is right here in front of us. There's a boat launch ramp here, but better make sure the river is safe. And now for a walk down the towpath. But I wish I was riding my bike. And apparently, got a washout here. 
Maybe a recent flood did this. Last I passed this way by bike, it was continuous. Now look at it. A big chunk there torn out. Originally, there was a culvert here for the towpath, but in the 70s, it got replaced by a pipe. And there's the pipe. Up there across the canal, there is a grade that once carried a road to Dargan Quarry, which beat to the west, to the left, a little bit of ways. It once passed through a tunnel. And there across the way, a wooden building where some industry once took place. I forget if it was a foundry or a lime kiln, but something took place over there. All right, continue on. Over there are some lime kilns. There you go, that's what took place. And apparently, the road is still up on that grade there. The tunnel should be soon. But up there some place is where the tunnel once began. The portal on this side is plugged up by dirt fills and landslides, but the west portal is still open around this here bend up here. In fact, there's the cliff the tunnel passes through. On the side of the cliff here, you'll see the west entrance right up there somewhere. And there's the west entrance, though it faces north actually, across the canal bed. facing south in the dry canal bed. And up there is our tunnel portal. As mentioned, that was kind of a vehicular tunnel. Vehicles going to the quarry would pass through there. And the road continued this way to the north, to the west, whatever. You can almost tell a road went through there. A lot of folks mistake this for a cave, but it isn't. It's a tunnel. It's man-made. It is not natural. And here we are inside. Up until the 80s, there was still a small hole of light coming through way back there, but now that they're totally plugged it up. I believe it was in the mid 60s, this plug for good and you couldn't go through it. But although this is man made, there are a couple of natural cave passages here. There is one down there. A crawl right down there someplace. Not about to crawl through it though. And up here someplace there's a fissure that also dead ends. I think over there someplace but the light won't get it. And looking back out, I hear seepage coming through the, the rock, the walls, whatever. But over here you see some blast holes proving it's man-made and not a natural cave. Blast holes there and other spots as well. Yep. This is man-made, it is not a cave. And down here, the canal bed again. Dry at this point. It does get muddy after a rainstorm. Okay, back to the towpath. If there was still water in the canal, it would be over my head right now. I'd be drowning. Again, the Potomac there. And heading back east, although facing south at this point. As mentioned, back in 97, I did a documentary on the entire canal, riding my bike over the entire mileage. I've got some parts of the documentary uploaded on YouTube as private videos, but I'm debating on temporarily making those videos public, just temporarily, as a promotional sort of thing. 
So if I make this public, better watch where you can, because it'll be for a limited time only. I'm driving back at Dorgan Bend. Hmm. She's making conversation. Alright, had her fun with the doggy. For a poodle, that's an awfully big one. Some boaters on the water down there. Yeah, good day for that. And back at the car. And over here, just what I need. Not departing this place. And now backtracking on the road, we came up on a cool church there. And again, the canal parallels us. A many bike ride along there. Many a bike ride. And way up there, Maryland Heights. One more time. Where Thomas Jefferson once sat and said that the view is worth the voyage across the Atlantic. Or in our case, we're the voyage across I-70. Look at the Salty Dog Tavern there, on the CSX bridges. The first one here built in 1936. The one after built in the 1860s, the older bridge. That one there, which now carries the footpath as well, into Harper's Ferry. And back in Sandy Hook. Nice place by the river. And up there, the modern day 340 again. I'd keep right if I were you. Didn't stop for a stop sign either. But it'd be a we turn left as well. And head over to the modern day 340. The road once poured that way at one time, before the modern day road was put in. Okay, head east. And there is a good view of South Mountain. Get a better view facing this way, they come in the other way. And back in Weaverton again. Right down there. Hard to believe it used to be here. The Casper Weaver, where the place got named after, once built a factory here. But the neighbors were jealous because he had rotting water, but they didn't. Interesting story there. Yep, they're jealous of Casper because he had running water in his factory they didn't have in their homes. Well, back in the 1860s, running water was, I guess, a novelty. Now we take it for granted. At least till the water stops flowing. And over there again, Catoctin Mountain. Which, as I said, takes a lower summit over this road. over the top and going down the other side. And again, a voyage across I-70. Hey, why not? But before 
continuing the voyage. Let's make a pit stop time here, where I get free hot dogs for making Odyssey, Odyssey videos. They know I'm doing a YouTube thing, so I get free hot dogs. I love it. And again, thanks to time lapse. Back on the road. Around 6 6.35 p.m. right now. That's about another 60 miles back. It's about an hour's ride. I wish I could have taken it a bit further, but fear not. I am planning better day odysseys, full-fledged odysseys. And again, the inspection area, that's almost never used. Yep, spent millions putting that in, but hardly ever use it. But, as I said before, it might be temporarily going public, but my Xeno cannot documentary private videos. Oops, they go speedy right there. So, if I decide to do that, watch this video as well you can, because they won't be public for too long. I did my documentary back in 1997, before the days of high death, but still, it's very informative and has received high marks from some people. So, if I make this video as public, you'd better watch. Because they'll be public for a limited time only. Just a limited time. So, if I do it, take advantage of it. It's cold off somewhat out there. It's still a bit muggy. A little bit muggy. in the Baltimore area. Oh joy. Cool traffic. But again, this. Well, going a bit faster now. Finally made it. Busy road this Sunday evening. As long as I arrive home safely, everything will be fine. Hey, over there, stop tailgating. Yeah. There you go, caught on SD chip. Well, I don't use tape anymore. But still, how come every time I sell some vinyl, I get seller's remorse? I'm starting to miss my vinyl. But at my age, I've got to part with a few things, unless somebody else gets some happiness out of it, right? That's the best way to think. Let someone else derive some pleasure. I did the past 40 years. Traffic's been very strange today, though. Very strange traffic. Speeders and all. You get one nice day, and everybody's out like flies. they driving the way flies fly. But still, wouldn't be so bad out here if people didn't play musical lanes. Don't know how else to put it. And finally back in our part of the world. And back on surface streets. But I thought all streets had surfaces of some kind. And back in the Baltimore city limits. And back in the hood, where the folks even left me a parking space. All right. Still pleasant out here. Temps up our 70s. Still some humidity, though.
There's a turtle here in the porch. But inside the house we have a real one. Hope everybody enjoyed today's trip and today's history. And once again, thank you for the privilege of your time, for riding along. But I better get inside, got some editing to do.